All right, welcome to chapter 5.3. We're going to talk about hardware used in mining. My name is Zachary Jones. You can find me at Slack and CCJ and part of the Delaware Blockchain Club, or also hit me up on Twitter. Cool, so in this module, what you're going to learn is the history of hardware, um, what competition is like for hardware in the mining space, and then a little bit about hash rate. So, history of hardware. <clears throat> in the beginning, CPUs were used for mining. So CPU is a central processing unit. Um, they're in every computer. And in the beginning, Satoshi said, let there be only CPU mining. And we'll see how that went. Well, that's not exactly what he said, but here's what he actually said on Bitcoin Talk in 2009. basically suggests that they have a little gentleman's agreement and postpone the GPU arms race. So he says, let's just use CPUs right now. It keeps the playing field level. We're not going to worry about GPUs. Turns out your CPU isn't ideal for mining, which he knew, but it was profitable in 2009 and 2010. Along comes GPU mining. So the GPU is a graphics processing unit. And on July 18th, 2010, Art Fours, username, breaks the gentleman's agreement and supposedly mines the first block with the GPU. On October 1st, the first OpenCL miner is released, allowing the masses access to GPU mining. So when Art Fours did it, he wrote his own program. Um, so it wasn't really widely accessible. But on October 1st, anybody could go out and download, um, download the code and mine with their GPU. So GPUs are fast and were very good for mining Bitcoin. They were originally built for video games um, because they're great for rendering graphics, which is a lot of repetitive work, just like mining. Um, the big players in the GPU space, AMD, ATI Radeon, and NVIDIA. So back in the day, very, very valuable to mine with the CPU. And as you can see, the dollar value of mining um, went down and down and down if you had that set hash rate. And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that later. But as your mining earnings went down, a few other factors started to come into play other than just the speed of your card. When the price collapsed in 2011, um, mining profitability went down because one, Bitcoin didn't cost as much, and two, so two, power costs started to come into play as a big factor, um, dictating mining profitability. The problem is the GPUs use a lot of power, and the falling price of Bitcoins meant that inefficient miners were no longer profitable. Enter stage left, FPGAs. These field programmable great gate arrays were more energy efficient as you could tether together multiple cards in the same device, as you can see. So they used a lot less energy, but had a much higher hash power than just using a single GPU. And this new technology allowed for the creation of the first Bitcoin farms. So you can see dozens or hundreds of devices all in racks in big warehouses that keeps them cool and provides a lot of power and access to the internet. Um, that's when these start to come into play. And the latest innovation are ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits. The first ASICs shipped in early 2013, and since these chips were built specifically for mining Bitcoin, we saw about a hundred times increase in hash rate from FPGAs. And like I said before, there is for a singular purpose. So if you bought a bunch of ASICs for Bitcoin mining, and then Bitcoin mining no longer was profitable, um, they'd basically be worthless because they're just for Bitcoin mining. So we don't expect to see another technology that gives us such an exponential bump in hash rate anytime soon. So now some of the primary determinants of profitability are power cost and efficiency of each chip. So let's talk a little bit about competition for hardware. Since Bitcoin mining is a commodity business, profit margins are very low. That means that competition is intense, and like many other commodity businesses, 
mining Bitcoin is only profitable at a large scale. As you can see in the picture in the bottom right, this is a huge Bitcoin farm with hundreds, probably thousands of processors, all mining Bitcoin. All these Bitcoin farms use ASICs now, so they're using specific chips to mine Bitcoin. And they're all networked together and have access to cheap power. And this makes it nearly impossible to profitably mine at home. As we'll get into in a few minutes, um, the more hashing power there is on the network, the harder it is for any individual miner to find a block and thus get the mining reward. So it's not really prof it's not profitable. To mine at home because your power costs are just higher than your expected reward. These Bitcoin farms are typically set up in cool areas where there's cheap power. So there are a lot of them in China because of the cheap power and then there are other ones in Iceland sometimes like in the northwest or in like the Arctic Circle area because it's really expensive to cool all these computers that are heating up while processing the information. So when it's colder outside you don't need to spend as much on cooling. The most efficient miner wins. So ASICs are not only competing on how fast they can uh, perform a hash or a calculation, but they're also competing on efficiency, which is measured in joules per giga hash. So if you can perform more hashes and use less electricity, you're going to keep your costs lower and be more profitable. So the difficulty of the mathematical problem that miners need to solve in order to win or get a block increases based on the total hash power of the network. So this is in the Bitcoin code. If the problem is too easy, the code will recognize that and increase the difficulty of the problem based on how many people are mining the blocks. Thus, when there's more hash power and more competition, it's much harder to get the reward. Um, hardware ROI is very unpredictable, so there are many factors that go into mining profitability. So the price of Bitcoin could fluctuate. That's a huge one. Faster hardware is oftentimes released um, over the course of months. So you could buy a new device and it might have a break-even point of one year, but then three months later, a faster device comes online and then the hash power of the network increases and your device is now barely getting any payout that you expected when you did your break-even calculation. So... That's what I mean by more miners coming on the network. It becomes more difficult as better technology is released and more people start mining Bitcoin. Lastly, uh, we'll talk a little bit about hash rate here. So a hash is basically a calculation. It's a guess. So in the 5.1 lecture, we talked about how miners are performing some mathematical problem. They're trying to solve a mathematical problem. And a hash is just a guess. It's like a roll of the dice. and if you get it correct, you'll win the block reward. So the more hashes your unit can do, the better chance you have of winning the payout, essentially. So here's the average, the hash power of the Bitcoin network since the very beginning of it. Um, as you can see, it's like a hockey stick-like curve. It's just gone up and up and up exponentially. The network hatch rate as of October 8th, um, over almost 2 billion giga hashes per second. So that is the combination of all the miners in the world, and that is more 300 times more powerful than the world's fastest supercomputer. See, so the amount of computing power and resources directed at the Bitcoin network is just insane. It's unprecedented. So individual miners, such as the Ant Miner S9, which is a which is a new new device can do about 13,000 giga hashes per second. Now this is gonna run you about $2,000 and that's not factoring in any of the power costs that it's gonna be taking while it's running. Buying one of these will get you about 0.0007% of all the Bitcoin mining power, so not bad. Um, and what's kind of crazy is a single S9 unit boasts a hash rate equivalent to the peak capacity of the entire Bitcoin network from its bootstrapping until mid-2012. So as we saw in the graph before, the hash rate of the network is just going up exponentially um, year over year with new technology being released. 
So if you spent two million eight hundred and forty seven dollars and forty and forty two dollars worth of amp miner s nines, you would get one percent of the Bitcoin network hash power. Um, so it's just a crazy capital investment in order to get any substantial percentage of the Bitcoin mining hash power. Cool. So that's the end of the module. If anybody has any questions, feel free to hit me up in the Slack channel at CCJ. Thanks.